In this short video I'll be showing how to uh, create a spring that behaves uh, like a spring does under compression. This is a model that was provided to me by a student. Uh, a couple of things I'm going to fix on here before we get going and I'll also be demonstrating a problem that uh, you might run into. I'm going to create a mate. Uh, right now, in fact, before I do that, you can see that this piston can move in and out. Uh, the hat here can rotate, which I don't want it to do. So I'm going to uh, set a mate up for the hat to be parallel to this here. I'll accept that. Um, I'll also create an advanced mate uh, whereby the, the underside of these uh, surfaces um, are controlled in distance. I'll set the maximum to be two inches and the minimum to be one inch. So there I am. I've accept, I will accept that, accept again, and you'll see that now the, uh, the piston stroke is limited to two inches or one inch uh, of distance from the underside to the top here. Uh, you can pick values that make sense for you. All right, so um, let's go ahead and work on making the spring. Now, uh, there are ways to do a spring, to create a spring whereby it's a, uh, a helical uh, shape, much like you would make a spring, uh, pardon me, a, a screw thread. Uh, in, this in, in this demo, I'm going to be using instead a special version of a uh, swept boss and base. Uh, there's some apparent differences between how uh, different versions of SolidWorks uh, present this, and I'll point them out uh, as I go. All right, so there is already a part in here which has a couple of drawn uh, sketches. That's this one here. And you'll see that there are two sketches here, one which is the profile, and the other is a path, which is a linear. It's a line that bisects the uh, shaft. So we'll be using those two, but you'll, as you'll see, I need to change one of them. First thing I want to do, I want to give it a name. I'm going to call it Spring. Uh, I don't like to use the automatic names. And I'll save it in an external file so that um, uh, it's now considered to be a, uh, a separate part. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's just a practice that I uh, prefer. All right, so let's go ahead and create a, uh, a, a, the spring shape. We'll need to open this part, open the spring. We're going to edit it right here in context. So there I am. And right now, as I mentioned, all it consists of is two sketches sketch one and sketch two. Um, um, let's show the failed method and then the proper method. I'm going to create a feature, a swept boss or base. The profile is the, the uh, circular sketch, which is the uh, cross section of the spring. And I will attempt to select the line, this uh, construction line, as the uh, path and you'll see that it fights me a little bit. I'll say OK, and I get an error message um, which indicating that uh, there's something that it's uh, seriously not happy about. As it turns out, you cannot use a construction line as the path for a, uh, this kind of uh, uh, swept base or boss. So I'll go into sketch 3, which is what contains that line and I'll click on the line and turn off the for construction uh, description and accept that. Now before I'm done I'll also point out that that line is going too far. This end point here goes too deep and uh, if I were to proceed to create the spring um, the spring would actually protrude partly beyond that surface. I need to back that up a little bit so I'm going to right click and delete this constraint and I'm going to manually move this endpoint up to a point where oh maybe halfway or so and again I'm not being too awfully particular here but uh, you know if you were creating an actual part you'd want to control that uh, more closely than I am right now what I've done here should work so I'll accept that now we're ready to go back to features let's exit the sketch go back into the features uh, dialog and create a swept boss base. Um, now it will permit me to click on the profile and click on the sketch.
seems better. Where you control other aspects of it, important aspects, is you go into the options menu, which would have not been available before. And the things that I want to do to make a spring, I want to keep normal constant. I want to specify the twist value. And the twist control is going to be in revolution, so I'll say put uh, oh, six revolutions in there. And there it's previewing my spring. Uh, notice it fairly well bottoms out over here, but uh, more to the point, there is the spring. I'm going to accept it, finish that, and now I have a spring uh, in place. If I move this piston to uh, the other limit, notice that the spring doesn't automatically reshape itself. I have to push the rebuild and it will correct and uh, for those of you who've created motion studies, you know that that's a, actually a really good thing. Let's go ahead and create one right here. We'll create a motion study, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, that piston moving uh, back and forth. So I'll create, go ahead and uh, let's get into here. I'm going to do a new motion study. And I'm going to open up the control panel at the bottom. Let's do five seconds worth of moving in. So I'll click my timeline, and then I will drag. Let me zoom in a little bit here, and I'll drag this to the new limit. I will calculate the motion, and you can see it compressing. That's all good. Uh, right now it's set to repeat. I will set it for uh, normal play playback mode, which is just one time. All right, uh, I've done that. Let me drag my uh, timeline out to 10 seconds. And then what I'll do is I'll go up and drag the piston back out to the other extreme, recalculate. And you'll see that now, uh, if I've done things correctly, it will move back out. Uh, here I have uh, created a usable uh, animation. And I can go into my uh, Save Animation uh, dialog and save it to uh, one of various formats. I'm not going to do it right now, but essentially that is the entire demo. Um, I might point out that there are some nice tools online uh, that allow you to take an AVI file, for example, and convert it to a, an animated GIF a uh, simple search on Google uh, will uh, open those up. Thank you. Hope you enjoy this.